for uh, organizing the event. Just last week, the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee um, <clears throat> that I chair held a hearing to conduct oversight with the Department of State on their strategies to strengthen U.S. Caribbean relations. This was the second hearing that we've held since I had been the chairman. And um, I want to underscore that I believe that the U.S. needs to increase our engagement uh, in the region. And I, I said that last week. I'll continue saying that. Not just the Caribbean, but I believe the United States needs to re-engage in the hemisphere more. Um, I think we have uh, not ignored, but we haven't paid enough attention uh, to the Western Hemisphere. So the priorities that uh, I'm particularly interested in and focused on are the issues of migration, uh, border security, illicit networks, um, net networks that drug cartels and terrorist groups can and could exploit, and challenges to democracy and human rights, and energy opportunities in the Caribbean region. I'll talk more about energy in just a minute. <clears throat> the activities of Iran, China, Russia also concern me, um, given that those governments' anti-American, undemocratic, and opaque business practices and lack of fiscal transparency. Um, security. We're all aware of the negative impact that drug trafficking is having on the Caribbean communities throughout the region. Uh, she can give me a little couple of other projects. In most cases, it's the youth of the region that get caught up in the violence and the crime associated with these illicit activities. Unfortunately, thank you. Um, unfortunately, in many countries, local law enforcement and institutions lack the resources and technical expertise to, and support to effectively confront these issues. That's where the United States can play a role. As compared to the U.S. and Caribbean cooperation focus on building capacity in all of these areas as transnational criminal networks continue to operate throughout the region. Summertime colds are bad. <laughs> we must also continue to work together to address the rise of terrorist groups like Hezbollah, uh, which is an Iranian-sponsored group, uh, who feed off the illicit activities in the region to fund their terrorist uh, activities and recruitment efforts. We all know, and last week in our hearing, we talked about um, folks from the region that have traveled to Syria and uh, Western Iraq to speak uh, with ISIS and, and possibly have traveled back to the region. Energy is a big issue uh, for me. Energy is an issue that I have focused on, and I think energy provides a tremendous amount of opportunity for U.S. Caribbean relations to improve and actually expand. So I want to highlight the vast potential uh, of that energy cooperation real quick. The region seeks to pursue greater energy security. And there are great opportunities for investments in energy infrastructure and U.S. exports of natural gas. We all know what's going on in Venezuela. We all know that Venezuela is a large source of energy for the region. Uh, we also know that the United States has found an abundance of natural gas and continue to find more and more. So where you have uh, large supplies and demand, then opportunity meets in the middle. So recent U.S. Geological Survey uh, in addition to the U.S. gas, U.S. Geological Survey also estimates 13 billion barrels of oil and 32 trillion cubic feet of gas that may exist in the Suriname Guyana Basin. Uh, increased engagement with U.S. energy companies uh, that do exploration production, but also LNG uh, export. Um, engagement of U.S. companies in the Caribbean is critical to helping the region achieve diversified energy resources, additional technical skills, and greater energy security. We can't uh, talk enough about that. I mentioned Venezuela a minute ago, but I want to continue and say that I've heard many times some countries prefer a non-interference position in the affairs of other countries, and I co-chair the U.S. Sovereignty Caucus uh, here in the United States Congress, so I fully understand those sentiments. However, when human rights crisis like we see in Venezuela, degradation of democracy in Venezuela, um, when it reaches that breaking point, then we should get involved because those are the right reasons to get involved for. The public health and migration crisis from rising numbers of refugees from Venezuela is also threatening other countries in the region. I want to applaud the Caribbean nations who have stood for democracy and human rights at the OAS of Guyana, Jamaica, St. Lucia, uh, the Bahamas, Barbados, and Belize. And I hope the increased engagement by the U.S. and the EU and other regional countries will strengthen other countries' resolve to support democracy in Venezuela. So just a to recap uh, a little bit, human rights, democracy are important to me. They're important to this Congress. 
Energy security is important to me. It's important to this Congress. It's important to the United States. I think it's important to the region. There's tremendous opportunity for American resources uh, to meet that uh, demand and provide opportunity not just for American businesses, not just for the United States, but also for the countries uh, in the Caribbean region and those businesses that operate there. Uh, I think there's tremendous potential for converting and changing over to LNG and lessen the dependence and reliance on foreign sources uh, and look into the United States with this abundance uh, to help with infrastructure, to help with technology for uh, harvesting resources within the region, but also providing energy sources uh, for the region. And then um, security, illicit uh, drug activities, uh, transnational criminal organizations and possible terrorist organizations through the region is something we have to focus on. That's also the judicial side of prosecuting and taking care of that as well. And then the democratic principles in Venezuela uh, are very, very important to me. And we're going to continue focusing on those issues and encouraging uh, countries within the region to stand with uh, democracy and stand with OAS and uh, hopefully having change in Venezuela for the Venezuelan people. And I thank you so much for giving me that opportunity. God bless you.